Well, in today's video, we're going to be talking about why October could actually be a very warm month here in the central and eastern United States. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but we're going to talk about the reasons why within this video. <music> Anyways, before we get into this video, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. Also, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think October will be a warmer month, or do you think there's a good chance it will be a cooler month overall? Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, let's get straight into things. Here is the CFS monthly forecast for October. This is a classic negative PNA pattern. We always talk about that positive PNA pattern, but this is the opposite. You could see cold temperature anomalies there for uh, the western portions of Canada, all the way down through Washington, Oregon, and then even down through California there as well. That is a negative PNA, and it, what it does is it basically allows for warmer air to build into the central and eastern United States, and it really doesn't allow for any cold air to make its way over to those regions of the country. And as you can see, that pattern is very true here. It's very classic. Uh, we see very warm temperatures here in the eastern half of the country, very cold there in the western fourth of the country, I would say. Um, now, here, I, I just want to give you guys a little bit of optimism because I know everybody kind of wants some colder temperatures here in the fall. Here's the outlook for November, and it doesn't look quite as bad. There is still those colder temperatures there for Washington and Oregon, not so much in California. This does extend now all the way through Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, Minnesota, and then kind of neutral temperatures in the eastern half of the country there. But December, you can see this pattern completely flips. We get a bit of a neutral PNA here. We have some colder temperatures, some warmer temperatures, but definitely some deep cold making its way into the eastern half of the country. So yes, don't feel like this means oh, we're absolutely going to have warmth for many, many months and it's over and I know how people get. So uh, this model kind of has us moving into this warmer pattern. We've kind of been in a warmer pattern throughout the majority of September and likely we will slowly start to descend towards a different pattern. Usually these patterns don't last uh, that long, like three months plus. So we should see a bit of a turnaround here uh, in the longer range. But let's focus on October here. Obviously that's what the video is about. Here is according to our CFS daily model, October 1st through October 6th, uh, and we could start things out with a little bit of a colder note here in the northeastern portion of the country. You can see there's still some warmth left over there for the west where that negative PNA has not fully set in yet. Mostly the warmth is centered over the central regions of the United States, but it's by time we move towards the 6th through the 11th when we really get those cold temperatures to move into the west. That negative PNA really sets up and we see warmth overall for the eastern two-thirds or even more of the country. Now, obviously, as we head into October, your average temperatures go down significantly towards the end of the month. So it's not necessarily going to be hot for these regions. It's just not going to be quite as cold as it normally would be. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to move on towards the 11th through the 16th, the 16th through the 21st, and then even the 21st through the 22nd, or sorry, 26th, and then the 26th through the 31st. Uh, and things could really switch up actually later towards the month. Now here we are taking a look at the 11th through the 16th and that negative PNA actually builds in even stronger uh, and it pushes further west or sorry further east better yet and what happens when that happens is the warmth pushes further east as well. Uh, it kind of moves with that cold. Everything moves from west to east so when you see usually these patterns start out in the west and then move and affect us here in the east that is just how it works. And you can see things look pretty warm. I mean, especially there, the further north you go compared to normal. Uh, as you make your way towards the Gulf states and a lot of the southeast states, things are very, very close to normal, even below normal in some spots. Uh, that's just because your average temperature is much higher than those in, let's say, Wisconsin and Michigan. So you could see similar temperatures, you know, the further south you go, even all the way up to the northern portions of the country here with this type of a temperature anomaly setup. Now, things start to turn around a little bit as we move towards the 16th through the 21st. The only unfortunate thing for us cold lovers here is we're heading further into the longer range, so confidence gets lower. So we're more confident in the warmth early in the month than we are in the cold later in the month. But you can see that we don't necessarily have that strong negative PNA by this point. Uh, we do have some neutral to below normal temperatures set up over the eastern portions of the country. Uh, and then things get a little bit confusing once we move towards the 21st through the 26th. And I would say be careful, be 
kind of take this with a grain of salt because you see that negative PNA set up, the cold temperatures out west, but we also see cold air along the eastern seaboard. And this is a pattern that is actually quite rare, and I am pretty speculative if this will even happen this way at all, uh, just because of the fact that usually when you see those cold temperatures in the west, that means very warm in the east. Um, so it's kind of like which one of these is really going to happen. It's a toss-up. We don't really know um, how to decipher that because of how un un common that type of a pattern is. Now this pattern we move in towards the 26th through the 31st becomes a lot more on par with something that is realistic. We see cold in the west, negative PNA again, and then we see that warmth setting up in the east. That's a lot more classic, a lot more common when you see this type of a setup in the west, and I buy this type of a pattern a lot more. So obviously for cold and, well not cold and snow lovers because Usually those things go hand in hand, but October, we're not really going to be looking towards any snow at all. Uh, but for us cold lovers that really want that cold fall time weather, uh, it is looking like overall there's a higher chance of a warmer month than a colder month. All right. Now, I want to announce also that our October forecast, because people are always asking, is going to be out on October 1st. So be on the lookout for that. We're going to move on here. and We're actually going to take a look at some teleconnections. Why is this happening? We're going to take a look at that Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation, and even the PNA or Pacific North American oscillation as well in just a moment. Now here is that AO or Arctic oscillation. You can see it's actually in a negative phase right now, but it's going to be trending positive the further along we move on. Uh, and the one thing I will say that is good about this, and I've always, always talked about this through the years that I've been doing these videos. Um, if you see a negative AO consistently through the fall, that's actually a bad thing for the upcoming winter because what this basically means in a negative AO, just to give a little bit of an explanation here, we see warmer temperatures over the Arctic regions in a negative AO. And what that causes is less ice, less snow. And that's very important for the deep cold in the middle of the winter because what you really ideally would like to see is a positive AO throughout a lot of the summer months and the fall months and then going negative in the winter because that means, in a, again, in, in a negative AO, the warmer temperature set up over the Arctic. In a positive AO, we see colder than normal conditions set up over the Arctic. And what that does is it builds more snow, builds more ice. Then once it finally does go negative, let's say that happened in December or January, it's going to be a much more potent cold uh, by the time we're reaching those portions of the year. That's if it goes negative. We've, I think in it was like 2018 to 2019, the winter, we had that kind of a setup, like a, a positive AO throughout the fall months. It was like, this is going to be great. This is going to be some epic cold, but it never went negative throughout the winter. It just wasn't able to do that. So the Arctic stayed very, very cold. Uh, and we saw it really build up a lot of ice and snow over the course of that winter, but it was never able to really unleash that. And I think eventually it did in the spring, but it was too little too late. And it was actually a very cold spring. I might be thinking of a different year. Let me guys know uh, if you, if you guys know, of what year that was if I'm wrong or right about that but really um this is a positive thing to see this positive AO that's what I'm really getting at here uh, we want to see that ice and snow building because that's what's going to set up for a colder winter if we see a negative AO throughout the fall months the ice and snow isn't going to be able to really develop like it needs to to have any deep cold heading into the United States so for now this is actually a good thing looking long term for cold and snow lovers NAO is kind of like the AO. It's not really too much to do with the ice. It's more about areas and, and pressure systems near Greenland, uh, and it, but it's the same thing. Negative phase equals cold in the United States. Positive phase equals warm in the United States, or the eastern United States at least. This one kind of heads neutral, and it stays neutral throughout a majority of the month of October there, according to this GFS extended ensemble. And then our PNA. Now, the one thing I will say is, based on what we just saw, it looked like mostly a negative PNA, but this model says, oh, there's a good chance we will be neutral or positive for a good portion of the middle to the late portion of the month there. Uh, we do go negative here from about the, let's call it the 6th through the 16th, and that's kind of what we were seeing on that CFS model, but mostly goes positive towards the middle to late portion of the month. So there is some, you know, things to be optimistic about, possible cold later in the month, but overall, I think the month will go down as a warmer month overall. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, this is a moderately long-range uh, look here. So we'll go with a four out of six here. That's about 50-50 or like, you know, 
60% confidence, something like that. Uh, so we feel moderately confident. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys yesterday in our winter thoughts video, what's your favorite winter month? And Jason Anderson said, January is my favorite. It's not only my birth month, uh, but usually has some good snow. Absolutely, I have some of my best snow memories in the month of January. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lila Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Sidney Klein, Mark Jake, Lou Falegos, Gary, John Colisi, Dwight Valen, and Steven Grenenthal. If you'd like to be a part of this very awesome patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1, Cat Bite, Steven Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. You can find this one next to the subscribe button down below if you are interested in joining. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.